Hey, welcome back to the shop. I'm Jason, and as you may have already gathered by the title, I'm insulating the finished walls inside my garage slash workshop. This is about 1,300 square feet or just over 1,300 square foot of attached garage on my house, which I, when I found this place and realized that there are homes like this in Phoenix, like regularly like this, I, my mind was blown. Either way, if you're looking for something like this and you need a real estate agent, hey, I do that too. Take a look at my other channel, link up above. We'll move on from that. Either way, the garage out here has been extraordinarily difficult to work in in the summertime. It's like living inside an easy baked oven. The first year I was reaching full ambient temperature out here, 120 plus degrees on the really hot days, which was quite unbearable. I also wasn't filming or doing these projects for the channel, so I had five fans and a giant swamp cooler running just to keep myself from passing out. Actually, the fan might be just blowing dust around. That's not gonna work if I'm gonna try to do anything with a camera. So I've been steadily working to try and improve the space by one, insulating my garage doors, two, I insulated the attic with blown cellulose insulation, and now three, I'm going to insulate all of my finished walls, which means I'm gonna have to take a big old hole saw and cut a bunch of holes in the walls. You see on my RV bay side here, you look behind me, it's 14 foot tall, and right along there, is fire block along the whole wall and all the way around back at different heights. So what I'm going to do is drill an opening up at the top, stick a fish tape down, find the fire block, drill below the fire block, and then I'll be able to fill all the walls up one at a time and do an incredible amount of drywall work. So far, what I've done is I've gone through and I've measured or I've used a stud finder. I don't know where it's at out here and I found what I believe are each one of the stud bays. I have 68 stud bays, and then on this side of the shop, I'm gonna have to drill on top and bottom. On that side over here, I don't think there are any fire blocks that I found. I'll check each bay as I cut them open, but I'll work through that as I get to it. I'm probably also gonna do a bunch of crack repair in the drywall out here. It was all done really poorly from the builder and I have cracks that run the entire 40 foot length of the garage, which now that I'm looking at, that's gonna be a lot of work, but I suppose I'll learn how to do it at minimum. All this is in preparation for the idea of putting air conditioning out here. Currently, that's not financially possible. I've gotten a quote for one company to put in a mini split with two heads and they quoted me just over $15,000. That's certainly not in the budget. I'm looking at doing it myself. I have installed too many splits in the past, one at a friend's house and one at my own house. When I went through UTI many moons ago, I did industrial refrigeration, thinking I would go into the AC uh, world. I wound up going to the car side. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable with it. I think I can do my own system for about $6,000 out here. Stuff has just gotten ridiculously expensive. Either way, I got to figure it out at some point so that I can film and work out here and do fun projects. I really want to do a bunch more work to the BMW this summer because race season is almost over here in Phoenix, at least what I do right now, autocross, uh, will pick back up in September. So come along with me as I start to dismantle my garage. I've already started most of the way by moving everything to the middle in my way here and Let's start drilling some holes in the wall and figuring out what we need to do here. Well, this is me drilling 93 holes in my garage wall. I did use a fish tape and eventually moved on to my measuring tape. That way I knew exactly how far the fire blocks were in each one of those bays. Using that giant bit is a bit unwieldy. If it catches, it's gonna throw you. And ultimately, that's how I wound up breaking my bit here. It was gonna throw me off the ladder. I let go of the drill and bam. All right, well, that is unfortunate. You can see the shaft broke clean off inside the drill when it fell dented the chuck. So getting this off is gonna be interesting. 
I guess we'll put it in the vise and see what we can do about that. Thankfully, it looks like my bit is still round. These things are pretty robust. I'm not really sure how to get this apart. No safety glasses. A little better shot of what's happening inside. So maybe I can grab this part of the shaft to release it here. There it was. Looks like this guy is unharmed. Guess I'm uh, going old school and using a corded drill so I can buy another drill. Damn it. So the time has finally come. I've got 93 holes cut in my wall. Had quite an adventure, nearly falling off of the big ladder, the little ladder, my stool, my drill bit getting caught in the wall a number of times, twisting my wrist up like a pretzel with that big six inch drill bit, it gets caught and it's gonna throw you. So that was a lot of fun, but I'm moving on, right? It's time to go get everything. I already cut 93 of these. I broke down a bunch of plywood so that I had backers in the wall when I go to put my plugs back in. That's these guys. I lost, I don't know, three or four of them in the wall as I was cutting. So I'm gonna have to buy some drywall to cut out more plugs as well. So let's get over to Home Depot. So if you're gonna be buying a lot of this insulation, it's really best to ask them to palletize it. That way it gets all wrapped up. It's a lot easier to bring home that way. I bought 30 bags here initially, thinking that that was going to be enough. We'll discuss later what it wound up being. It was actually quite difficult to figure out how to calculate the volume here, having never done this. You can see that I drilled six inch holes and in this wall, it was a two by four studded wall. This three inch plus hose didn't fit in the wall without jacking up the drywall. So what I did is I sleeved it down to one of my vacuum hoses at two and a half inches and you, you can hear what's happening here. You stuff that hose down into the bottom to try to get a dense pack. That means it's packing in as solid as you can make this fibrous stuff. And then as the machine starts to whir down, you hear the tone change, you pull your hose out so that you can pack the next section. Then you just continue to do this until you get up to the top and you wait till the machine bogs down yet again, packing out that final circle so that you get a nice solid pack and none of it is falling out. Yes, this is as much fun as it looks. Day two really was the start of what I call sketchy things to do on a ladder. Because I'm working around my garage door, working around my lift, working around the shelving I built in the back, I had to get into some odd locations to try to fill and cut all these holes. All right, so this is day two using this stupid insulation blower machine. And something that I think is unique is we left insulation in the tube and in the machine last night. And something about the condensation overnight Plug this thing up solid. I just spent the last hour fishing a fish tape through the hose back and forth, trying to break up chunks and then turn the machine on and it plugged again. Fish it, clean it, turn it on and plug. So my recommendation would be empty this sucker out at night if there's any cold weather. It's not like it was even cold. It got down to like 55 last night, but I need to take a break have a cup of coffee and not want to, you know, chop this stupid green box up into little pieces. I'll be back in a minute. Day two, after unplugging the stupid hose, we made it. And we've got reinforcements today. Grandpa's here.
Here we are with the aftermath. I've taken the machine back. We wound up using 46 bags. We'll talk about that again here in a second. Originally I had purchased 30, so we had an emergency run there in the middle, but again, talking about how much dust is everywhere. I'm gonna have to move everything in the shop to clean around every single little piece that I can touch. Otherwise this stuff is just gonna fluff up for decades, I'm sure. Okay, so let's take a moment to cover the entire project. I'm gonna break down the price and what all of this cost me. And I'm gonna include the ceiling, even though I didn't film that in this segment. That way, if you have a garage that you're trying to do, or even a finished house, I mean, this garage is 1300 square foot, so it could be about that size, you can try to figure out a price point for you. Mind you, none of the labor cost is built in here because I'm doing this all myself. And, well, was that a good idea? Legally, we call these mental or emotional damages. Probably gonna get better results from somebody that's done this a hundred times or a thousand times as a business. I'm not here as a professional. But, you know, in this community, we do things ourselves, and I'm just gonna keep pressing and keep on trying. So let's break down the insulation. How much did I use? I calculated originally about 27 bags for my wall fill. Now I was using a bunch of different online calculators, all of which were wrong at the end of the day, but I think that that's because I wound up actually getting a good dense pack and packing that stuff in there pretty firm. I wound up with 37 bags for my 1300 square foot garage. Now, the two inside walls were pre-insulated because those are up against my house, so they didn't count. I bought 30 bags originally, and I got the bulk price because when you buy them at 30 or more, you get a $2 discount. So that was $469.51. Then the additional 16 bags were $294.60. We weren't really sure once we were about halfway through the project how many we were gonna need to finish out the rest of the space. So I guesstimated at 16, we wound up using um, seven of those 16. And then the other nine, I had the blower machine. So I was thinking there's no reason to take them back for the 160 bucks at this point. I'm gonna put them in the attic and make sure I'm gonna get a good value up there. Cause at the end of the day, I'm trying to make the garage comfortable so I can do a ton of projects out there. So originally I put 42 bags in the attic. That was $675. Now there's 51 total. I have an R21 rated wall now because it is a two by six wall and I packed that stuff in there as tight as I could get it. And my ceiling, I'm somewhere between eight and 10 inches, which puts me at R30. Eight inches or so would be R30, so I'm just gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. R30 is my number. All told, when I look at the cost of the insulation for the walls and the ceiling, and the $70 in drywall mud and tape and everything that I bought, I'm $1,510 into that side of the project. Now, along the way, I broke my last drill in half. That sucks. That kind of sucked. I broke my last, my other cobalt drill a couple months back on my desk build. It just, the motor fried. So it was time to buy another drill. I'm going to be upgrading from cobalt to Milwaukee. Some people will say upgrade or downgrade, doesn't really matter. It's the toolkit that I've been looking at for a while now because they have so many options for awesome tools for what we're trying to do here. I did add a 12 foot A-frame ladder. I have my extension ladder, I have a folding ladder, but I'm also gonna be changing the lights out in the garage and getting to those and doing ceiling drywall work on either the extension or my other extension folding multi-purpose ladder. It just wasn't tall enough. So the 12 foot ladder made sense for me and I bought the six inch hole saw. So the hole saw was $55, the ladder was 302 and then the new drill, it's a drill driver combo is $218. All told $575 into tools for what will last me a while, I'm sure. The six inch hole saw will also work for adding can lights and other things. I am planning on splitting my channel off and keeping this channel specifically car related and then doing true house DIY projects on my, my new channel to come soon in the future and working on my rentals and things like that separate from my real estate channel. So in this whole project, I'm just over $2,000 with insulation, with tools, with ancillary purchases along the way. I didn't have to buy any wood to do the backers because I had a bunch of uh, plywood lying around. You got wood. Now, 
I'm not gonna finish the drywall in this video because it's probably gonna take me three or four weeks minimum to get that all done between working my normal job and trying to do other videos and just keep things going. So that's gonna take a little while. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate you watching. Hit that like, subscribe, hit one of these other videos that are gonna pop up in the corner. The algorithm's gonna try to pick something for you. And I look forward to seeing you in another video. Thanks for watching.